Hi, welcome to a short tour of the Diagnostic Radiology Lab. I've opened the PDF document and I like to go to the View menu. I like to select Single Page and then Enter Full Screen Mode. In Full Screen, this lab activity will navigate like a website with links to the various sections. With a comprehensive radiology reference guide, your students will learn about the skeletal system, about bones, joints, injuries and conditions including fractures, dislocations, scoliosis, bulging discs, and much more. They will learn how x-rays can be used to diagnose injuries and some of the surgical techniques used to repair them. Then your students will examine images of 26 patients and with the help of the reference guide, they will make their diagnosis. Let's start with a quick look at our patients. And I think we'll start with patient one. Here we see an x-ray of the lower back and of the pelvis. And we have seven questions for this patient for students to answer. Let's jump down to question five. What type of joint is labeled B? So we're looking for this area right in here on the x-ray. Your students might know the answer right away or they may need a hint. If I click on this guy right here, it'll take me to the part of the reference guide that will help your student. I seem to remember something about synovial joints, so I'll click here, and now we take a look at the types of synovial joints. From the picture, your student might get a hint that a ball and socket joint could be our answer, and after reading about it, we find that, in fact, that was a ball and socket joint. So we'll go back to patient one, and on their student answer sheet, they can fill out the answer to that question. I'm going to skip on to patient 16. Here we see soft tissues of the intestine that show up because a barium dye was ingested by the patient. Chapter 1 discusses how a dye or contrast can change the appearance on an x-ray. So when we go back to patient 16, we can go through and start answering some of the questions. If we look at question 79, most of the vertebra shown in this x-ray, if we need a hint, we can go directly to the page on the skull and spine, and we can see that the x-ray showed mostly the lumbar or lower back vertebra. Patient 18A and 18B are the same patient. 18A shows the patient before surgery, and 18B will show us the same patient after surgery. So now we're talking about injuries. And our question is asking us, from the x-ray, what can we determine about this? Is it a fractured radius and a dislocated ulna, a fractured ulna, dislocated radius, and so on? For a hint, we can go to page 10, and we can see the bones. This will be very helpful in determining which bone is the radius and which is the ulna. I can see that the radius is the bone that's closest to the thumb. So going back to our patient, I can see that, in fact, the radius is the bone that has been fractured. Then we want to describe the type of fracture. And here we're going to need to take a look at chapter 4 with fractures. We can start with a general classification of fractures. We can use the little link at the bottom of the page to go to the next page of the chapter. We can see if it's an opened or closed fracture, displaced or non-displaced, complete or incomplete. And then we can try to determine the exact type of fracture. Is it linear? Is it a transverse fracture, an oblique fracture? And we can look at more details of each. So when we go back to our patient and we choose from our list of choices, we can determine the type of fracture that this is. We'll click on Next Patient, and we'll go to 18B, which is our same patient, after surgery. So here we can see what was done to the patient. Hardware was added. If I click the hint, I can look through different types of surgical techniques. I can decide if it's external fixation, or if it was in fact open reduction and internal fixation, hardware placed under the skin, and then the type of hardware that was used. Were they pins, plates and screws, rods and nails, or a combination of several? In addition to the comprehensive 55-page radiology reference guide and the 26 patients 
There's also a patient survey, a radiology board exam to prepare students by getting them familiar with the content found in the radiology reference guide, and a student answer sheet. From the home page, students are guided to the introduction where students can read a complete explanation of how this lab works. I'm using my Mac, but the Diagnostic Radiology Lab will work on any device that can read a hyperlinked PDF document, and the experience on an iPad is just fantastic. Okay, earlier we were on my MacBook, now we're looking at my iPad. I'm going to select the Documents app, and I'm going to open up the Diagnostic Radiology Lab. And I love the experience that I get when I'm using my iPad. All of the hyperlinks the intro, the patients, the radiology reference guide are all active. I love the ability to just simply zoom and enlarge on the screen. The detail and the clarity on my iPad is really the best experience that I've had on any device. Well, thank you very much for watching this video. If you'd like to get a better look at the Diagnostic Radiology Lab, you can check my store for the free Diagnostic Radiology Lab Lite, which just takes a few of the components of this lab, but actually allows you, without paying anything, to get a feel for exactly what to expect with the full version. Thanks again.